I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and you're watching Sprinkler TV. Today, we are going to review the five basic components to any automated lawn sprinkler system or automated irrigation system. Sprinkler systems, irrigation systems, they're kind of one and the same. Typically for residential purposes, they're called sprinkler systems and for commercial applications or agriculture, they're referred to as irrigation systems. But if you hear a sprinkler system or an irrigation system, Typically, they mean the very same thing. So let's start with the water source. Every irrigation system is going to require a water source. It could be coming from a well or it could be coming from a municipal source. Those are the two most common water sources. And the first component that we need to mention, component number one, is the backflow preventer. I'm going to show you my screen here. This device is known as a backflow preventer. And what it does is it prevents cross contamination from water being applied in the landscape to water entering either your home or uh, entering your well. Okay, so backflow preventers are required on almost every system and you never hook an irrigation system up to your hose bib on your house. When I say irrigation system, I mean automatic underground system. You can certainly hook hoses up or temporary irrigation, but you will need a backflow preventer and it is always at the source, at the starting point of your water supply. Next component, component number two, is a control system, a control box, also known as a timer. Some people call them clocks. And this is an example of a Toro control box. These timers, controllers, clocks come in various shapes, sizes, zone counts, manufacturers. Some are more sophisticated than others. Some you can connect to the internet and operate with your smartphone. But the basic idea is that all your programming is going to go into the controller and the controller is going to send a 24 volt electrical signal to the valve, which we are going to talk about uh, next at scheduled time. So if you want zone one to come on at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, all that information is entered, programmed into the controller, and at that specific time, the controller will send 24 volts down the wire path out to the valve in the landscape. So let's go ahead and talk about a valve. The reason that we have valves, and I'll show an example here, this just happens to be a Rainbird one inch automated valve that consists of a solenoid. This is the device that receives 24 volts from the controller, always 24 volts. And there's actually a pin inside here that lifts. And when the pin lifts, it actuates a rubber diaphragm that allows water to, whoop, in this case, water to, uh, I had it right, water to flow through the pipe like this, okay? So on the upstream side of your valve, you have what's called the mainline piping. And the mainline pipe is pressurized all the time. If the mainline pipe were to break, if you hit it with a stake or a shovel, it is going to run until you go into your house and you turn off your main water supply. Piping on the downstream side of the valve is only pressurized when the valve actuates. And the reason that we have a valve, and this is referred to as a zone valve, is because it is nearly impossible, actually it pretty much is it's always impossible to water your entire landscape all at once. You cannot turn on 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 sprinklers at the same time because your, your water supply is not large enough to feed all of those sprinklers at the same time. And a great analogy would be if you flush every single toilet and you turned on every single faucet and you turned on every shower in your house, you probably wouldn't have enough water and you were doing the dishes and you had your washing machine on. There's just not enough water to uh, act to activate every one of those appliances in your home. And an irrigation system or a sprinkler system works the same way. You're going to zone these uh, smaller and you're going to then activate them one at a time. Zone one will run for a certain period of time, then zone two, then zone three. And you can program this information into the controller. So instead of watering your whole yard at once, you're going to water sections of it at a time that are controlled by the valve. And the valve has a 24 volt signal and it opens and allows water to enter the pipe. And when water enters the pipe, it moves to sprinkler. And there are two types of sprinklers that are most common. One is a spray type sprinkler. This happens to be the Rainbird 1800 model, very popular sprinkler. And they, they use what's called a spray 
nozzle and the keyword being spray and a spray nozzle distributes water in a fixed pattern all the time. So if it's a 45 degree nozzle, you'll have water spraying in 45 degrees for a certain distance, let's say 10 feet. Then you could have a 90 degree nozzle or a 180 degree nozzle or a full 360 nozzle and then it will spray for that same distance, 10 feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, et cetera. Generally, spray heads are used for areas less than 15 feet. So tight, tight turf areas, smaller bed areas. And when we exceed 15 feet, then we're gonna move to another type of sprinkler that's known as a rotor. And a rotor, uh, this one is the Hunter PGP, another very popular sprinkler. A rotor just has one nozzle in it and then it rotates back and forth. So you can set this arc angle for whatever degrees that you want and you can interchange the nozzles to change the amount of water and the distance. So rotors are typically used for areas that are greater than 15 feet. And then a rotor has a three quarter inch inlet. This may be too much information for you, but a rotor has a three quarter inch inlet and then a spray head, this just example here, has a, uh, has a half inch inlet. And keep in mind, you never wanna put these two types of sprinklers on the same zone. You wanna have one zone of spray sprinklers and a different zone of rotors because they have different precipitation rates. So you, you do not mix and match these on the same zone. Finally, you might have a zone of drip. Drip is an awesome way to water very efficiently, especially in areas where you might not want any overspray next to foundations, etc. And uh, one of the most common types is called inline, inline tubing. This happens to be a piece of Netafim TechLine CV, and you can just simply snake this and weave this in and out of your landscape beds. But keep in mind, it will need to be connected to an automatic valve. So when the drip zone activates, it's just the drip. Okay, so that would be uh, the fourth component. So we started with backflow number one, controller number two, valve number three, and the sprinklers number four. And the fifth component is your piping. Whoop, your piping. And your piping is your mainline pipe, which is pressurized leading up to the valve. And then downstream of the valve to the sprinklers is your lateral pipe. So you can get very, very uh, sophisticated, complex, technical with irrigation systems, but generally they're actually pretty simple. You have water moving through pipe to a sprinkler, and then you have 24 volts of electricity going to a valve that opens the valve. And when the valve opens, water moves through the pipe, enters the sprinkler and distributes the water. So that should be a pretty decent summary. If you have any more questions for us, please reach out to us. We are available by phone, chat, and email. And until the next episode of Sprinkler TV, happy sprinkling, my friends. We'll see you then.